Welcome back to Fight News Now Live. We are here after UFC 152 went down in Toronto tonight. And now we're taking it back over to our MMA panel, who are standing by with featherweight Marcus Brimage. We are here with the victorious Marcus Brimage, who we saw in action at UFC 152 at the Air Canada Centre, earning a decision victory over Jimmy Hedges. And Marcus joining us live here in studio just hours after your, victor your victory at UFC mm -hmm. 152. Congratulations, first of all, on the thank fight. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I just got to ask quickly, is this mic on? Is this oh, on? no, no, man. You know, <laughs> hey, Tell us about the new look that you did this? at the weigh-ins. Yeah. Okay, so uh, everyone knows that Quentin Rampage Jackson in Dragon Ball Z are the reason that I got into MMA today. So in order to pay homage to Dragon Ball Z, I decided to get me a Dragon Ball Z power level scanner, you know? And it works too, it you works. You can scan stuff with yes, that? Yes, I, I scanned I scan Jimmy Hans' power level, uh, right. and I saw it was over 9,000. Did you scan the scorecards before they were red? Were, were you aware of Oh, I already? didn't have it then, I, I didn't have it then. My coach just happened to give it to me, you know, right before the decision was made, you know? Can you see through women's clothes with that thing? No, I don't can read power levels. Like, I'm going to read yours right now, okay? How am I doing? All right. You are a 72, so you have the strength of a 38-year-old woman. Okay. <laughs> Damn, it. Damn, it's about right. That thing works. That thing works. Let's get back to the, to the fight, Marcus. Uh, three rounds with Jimmy Hedges, who was a very tough opponent coming in here. Uh, let's talk about the second round, because uh, he really came on there in the second round. Mm -hmm. What did you feel uh, going into that third round? Because it seemed to be about a, a even going into that third round. Uh, yes, um, I knew that I had to stay disciplined. I had my uh, coaches in the corner. Uh, screaming at me to stay disciplined because uh, I usually like to Hulk out and like, ah, oh, Hulk smash, Hulk bash, but I had to, you know, I had to woosa and I had to focus and listen to Charles McCarthy, my coach Chris Conley, and I, I had to listen to him and do exactly what they told me to. And it worked. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to get involved. Were you frustrated at all? It seemed like you were hitting him with a lot of power punches, mm -hmm. yet he kept coming forward. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, discouraging for you at, at any point? Uh, yes, actually it was because I was like, come on, dog. I know you feel it, you know, <laughs> but uh, he kept coming, and that just shows that Jimmy Hedges is, you know, he's a top-tier guy. I mean, he's not going to let any punches stop him from his mission, which was to take me out, but thank God I was able to do it. You know, we had uh, your, one of your coaches, Charles McCarthy, here the other night, and we were talking, he was showing us some of your footage, and he laid out for me, explained some of the game plan of staying inside that black line, mm -hmm. staying off the fence, how you were gonna defend those throws, yeah. and it really looked like you were a video game doing exactly what he said. Yeah. How much work is that to prepare to be able to execute a game plan like that? Um, for me, it comes quite natural because uh, I come from a military background, family. Uh, my brother, he actually graduated the Naval Academy with Brian Stan. So, wow. yeah. So, wow. my dad, he's been in the military for like 30 years. I'm in the military. So, I'm used to doing what I'm told to do. If someone, if my coach tells me to punch right, right now, bam, I'll punch. Yeah. <laughs> what, without even thinking about it because he told you, you me to do it. You shouldn't punch a 38 year old woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. Yeah. So, it, it was able it was easy for me to go with the game plan that they laid out for me because, you know, I'm a soldier and I'm used to, you know, following game plans and, you know, following orders. So it just came natural. Well, it, it was to a T what he described. Mm -hmm. Could you feel that going into that third round that you had things under control? Um, no, because um, going to the third round, I honestly felt like I lost. So I, I knew that I couldn't allow him to take me down. I couldn't let him take me down, and I had to double up on punches, triple up on punches. I started utilizing leg kicks, and I noticed that he didn't have an answer for the leg kick. So after each combination, I'd throw a leg kick, and uh, I was just so happy that it worked out in my favor. Your corner was uh, very vocal at the end of the second yes. round, telling you, what did you come here for, Marcus? Yeah. Was that a bit of a, a second win for you going into that third yes. round? Because they were very vocal to you going yes, into that Yes, it final. was. He uh, got his takedown, and, um, you know, it was hard because, you know, I didn't freak out. You know, that that was like the first time I've been in deep waters with a superior jiu-jitsu practitioner. And uh, I was able to listen to my coach. And it was like, what you come here for? What you coming for? I came here to win. So, you know, I was threw him off me, did the bat flip, and walked off, you know? And talk about your athleticism. Did that, uh, that obviously helped you when, you when you went down mm -hmm. to the ground. It seemed like he could have put you into some bad spots, but you stayed mm -hmm. calm and used the, uh, your athletic background. Yes. Uh, well, growing up um, while I was doing jiu-jitsu, you know, I was with, you know, a whole bunch of jiu-jitsu guys. I was like, oh, man, 
you, you being too athletic, you being this. Well, I'm athletic. You know, <laughs> I, I can't help that. You know, I grew up playing football my whole life. So I know how to cut corners. I know how to explode because that's just how I was brought up. So Charles was like, use your athleticism. So he showed me to use jujitsu with my athleticism and not let my athleticism, like, put me in bad positions uh, mm -hmm. during jiu -jitsu Knowing that you can find your way yeah. out of it. Where, when, where would you classify your jiu-jitsu game now? And especially uh, fresh off of this with, with Jimmy Hedges, with, with your hand being raised. I mean, that has to help your confidence oh. just uh, going into those deep waters uh, you mentioned. Charles McCarthy, he tells me all the time, I have black belt defense. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, that, speaking of that, like the, the game plan was laid out and we're going to stand with this guy. We're going to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. When it hits the ground and all of a sudden you've got a guy going for your back, you know he's good. A normal human's mind goes, oh man, I'm in trouble here. How mm -hmm. do you prevent that from happening? What is it in the, your programming that allows you to stay calm and, and act there? Uh, just mat work. Mat work. Constant mat work. Uh, I'm training with Charles McCartney. I'm training with uh, Ty Gorilla. I'm training with Bubba Jenkins, Daniel Strauss, Mike Bruno. Like, these guys, you know, I mean, come on. A Bellator guy, a national champion wrestler, another, another, you know, thick-ass wrestler. You know what I mean, for real? He's, he's, he's huge, you know? And I'm going with these guys and just constant training. I mean, there's, there's no secret to it. Hard work is what it is. How do you feel after the fight? Any any bumps and bruises? Anything out of the ordinary? How no, do you feel? I, I got a little bruises, but you know I'm still sexy. I'm gonna go out to my after party, do my the fizzle, of course. <laughs> well, what's gonna happen at the after party? How is Marcus Brimage gonna celebrate? I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your coach said very specifically, do not talk about thick women. Yes, yes, so. he did. He did. He made me promise, so I gave my word. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. 38-year-old so. woman decided to say it. So. Congratulations, Thank man. Thank you so much. Really Thank you so much for having me on the show. Marcus Brimage, he was your winner at UFC 152, getting past Jimmy Hedges, and we will look forward to him returning to the Octagon very soon. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you. Hey, if you're thirsty, fight network. <laughs> Question's that's your that first. Question's your third. <laughs> drinking some water. I don't know if that's what he's going to be drinking to later tonight, but uh, what a funny guy. We were so happy to have him here in studio, and he even let me put on his Dragon Ball Z headgear. It didn't really work for me, so I let him keep it. Anyway, stick with us here on Fight News Now Live. We are bringing you more UFC 152 and all the results with our MMA panel.